Hello everybody and welcome back. Today's topic is about electroplating and in particular electroplating with copper on steel. A professional professional method to do this using um, a bath of uh, an electrolyte uh, with a solution of um, copper sulfate uh, and uh, one electrode made of copper and the other electrode, uh, the, the part that uh, need to be electroplated and of course uh, a power supply to provide the current, the required current uh, to, uh, to, do, to perform the electrolysis. It is pretty simple, uh, everybody can do this at home and, um, and copper sulfate is uh, relatively cheap. Only problem is in where I live Copper sulfate is available only in bags of 50 kilograms, <laughs> which is way, way too much for my experiments. So I looked around over the internet uh, for an alternative method and I came across to the one that uses table salt. Well, uh, how it works? This is a diagram of the circuit. Uh, here we have uh, the, uh, the, the negative uh, electrode, which is the cathode which is the part uh, that needs to be plated and, um, and it is connected through a wire to, uh, through a light bulb to the negative pole of the power supply. And uh, here we have the positive, uh, the anode, the positive electrode, which is made of copper. I used a chunk of pipe, the one used for plumbing and it is connected through a wire to the positive of the power supply and uh, here in the middle we have uh, a piece of cloth that is soaked into a uh, uh, solution of table salt and water and works as an electrolyte letting, let to, to let pass through uh, ions only. Uh, the light bulb have the function to limit the current in the case we uh, make a short circuit between the two electrodes because the filaments uh, um, have a much higher resistivity when it is hot than it has when uh, uh, it is colder. So um, in the case uh, of a surge of current uh, because of short circuit uh, uh, the current will rise the temperature of the filament uh, to the point that uh, the resistivity will go really high and will limit the current of the through the circuit. And this is the diagram under the chemist uh, point of view. <laughs> I'm not a chemist, but uh, I'm trying to figure out uh, how it works. So um, we have here uh, a flow of current of electrons that flow uh, from are sucked away from the anode and pumped up from uh, the, uh, the cathode, which is the negative. Remember, uh, this is the opposite of the conventional current that is usually um, normally said flowing from the positive, positive to the negative. Uh, actually, electrons uh, goes away from the positive and pump up from the negative. So uh, because uh, electrons are goes, goes away, are sucked away from this point, uh, um, at, uh, copper atoms uh, at the surface of the, of the anode uh, lose one electron and becomes ions, positive ions, that are attracted to the negative of the, uh, at the cathode and uh, will rejoin again with the electron uh, forming again copper solid copper which is which sticks uh, on the on the surface of the cathode which is the plate uh, the plating effect uh, we we are looking for um, but uh, here we have the solution uh, remember we have the solution of sodium chloride which is table salt and so we have uh, uh, sodium ions which are positive uh, chlorine ions that are negative, uh, oxygen which is negative, hydrogen two atoms of uh, hydrogen two ions of hydrogen that are positive. So uh, 
oxygen and hydrogen will join together making a uh, uh, hoxy uh, hydrogen uh, oxy hydrogen group which will join a, with the sodium making sodium hydroxide and uh, two ions of uh, hydrogen will join together making hydrogen gas uh, which which will goes away and in fact we will see uh, small bubbles uh, going up from the, the the reaction when we do the electrolysis and that is the hydrogen that goes away uh, from uh, the electrolyte and some chlorine will uh, will join with uh, will bend with uh, uh, the copper ions uh, making some copper chloride uh, the surface of the anode and um, and here the sodium hydroxide will join with the copper with solid copper making some uh, oxides uh, maybe uh, copperous oxide which is red reddish orange uh, yellowish and um, and uh, uh, cupric oxide which is black we see uh, these colors uh, on the surface of the of the of the of the material so i wanted to try to improve this process and i come up with the idea to use a lemon uh, because <laughs> lemon juice uh, mostly contains um, ascorbic acid and uh, citric acid and citric acid will combine uh, with uh, sodium hydroxide making uh, some kind of citrate also i thought to experiment vinegar which is a uh, acetic acid and uh, which would combine with uh, sodium hydroxide making some kind of uh, uh, acetate uh, depending by the concentration that wa was my idea <laughs> that's that's uh, that's my guess however if there is someone among you that is a chemist uh, or uh, have a more knowledge uh, about this uh, please let your comment in the section below but remember this is just for fun uh, so let's see how it worked this is the piece of steel mild steel that will that will be uh, electroplated and uh, uh, of course it is necessary to clean up the part very well so I use a uh, hand uh, cleaning paste to remove any grim oil grease and so on because I'm not satisfied I use even uh, acetone to remove any possible <laughs> residue of oil and that's it look at that shiny this is the lemon from which I extracted the juice that contains acid, ascorbic acid and uh, citric acid. And this is the case um, you don't have uh, uh, any power supply even two batteries could do the job uh, even though the voltage uh, is a little bit too low for an effective job
One key point is to make a saturated solution because if there is not enough sodium chloride dissolved, it is more likely that uh, hydrogen and oxygen will be generated by the, electro by the electrolysis than uh, chlorine and hydroxides. So uh, it is really important to make the solution uh, saturated. You see, the salt no longer dissolves into the water, so this is the sign that the solution is saturated. For this experiment I added about 50% of lemon juice, but uh, in uh, a further experiment I've seen that uh, less than 10% of uh, acetic acid is much better. And this piece of cloth is used as a bridge for the ions and to hold the electrolyte. And it is better to use a spongy fabric made out of cotton. The battery is here. We have here uh, the positive, the red. The other side of the lamp, we go to the piece of metal that we want to plate. So we put the metal just above the, the wire and the, the lamp is connected in series so uh, in the case we make a short the lamp turns on, turns on. and this is to limit the current uh, that flows through the batteries. First we cover the electrode with a little bit of cloth like so, soak it into the solution, like so, and we start plating. A little bit, uh, we have to be, have, uh, we have to be patient, but it's starting to work. The motion back and forward is useful to prevent the formation of uh, spikes, uh, uh, copper spikes through the cloth and that could cause uh, short circuits uh, and, um, and to make uh, a more uniform plating. And here I'm adding a little bit more uh, stick acid, indeed you see it is more reddish the coating and uh, the black part, uh, which is cup cupric oxide, which is black, uh, is going to gonna go away. It seems uh, it uh, it is pure copper, but despite it uh, seeming to, to work, uh, uh, indeed. This part didn't went. Uh, this this experiment didn't went very well. Indeed, you can see here uh, some flakes uh, of uh, of copper are detaching from the surface of the metal. <laughs> Look at that. Wah, wah, wah. This experiment didn't work. Uh, very well and here you can see pressing with a thumbnail is enough to make it go away so this experiment didn't work and um, and the addition of uh, citric uh, acid didn't work very well and this time is uh, the second experiment with the acetic acid. The beginning it seems to work well uh, with uh, the, the clear layer of copper, and, but uh, as soon as the layer 
becomes thicker, a lot of copric uh, and coprous oxide uh, happens because it is black, but there's more cupric oxide which is reddish than cuprous, which is somewhat a good sign, but uh, eventually after cleaning up the part uh, uh, it appears evidently that uh, the experiment didn't work. <laughs> And this time is the table salt only experiment, uh, the, the one that you, you, you find everywhere online. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, uh, a lot of um, cuprous oxide is formed. I think it is cuprous oxide in microcrystalline form because it is yellow. And uh, because, as you will see later in the video, uh, it turns uh, red when concentrated and uh, green once it is oxidized. And um, because I think uh, uh, sodium hydroxide reacts uh, with copper before it uh, even reaches the uh, surface, surface of the metal, uh, reducing the efficacy of the plating and uh, therefore taking that long time to, to, to plate the, the part. But eventually um, it becomes uh, plated and, and when it is plated, it's plated very well. It has a good adherence and, um, and it is perfect, perfectly smooth. Look at that, it is really, really nice beautiful under magnified view you can see the quality of the of the plating that it has been obtained with this uh, simple method so just using table salt is enough to get uh, a decent if not good plating uh, copper plating but there is some room for improvements and i've seen that uh, adding three to five percent of uh, citric acid give better performance and good results. So let's try again with another combination of uh, less citric, oxide, uh, citric acid and this time it seems uh, it went quite good coating is uniform and uh, really nice. Okay, even though this is a homebrew method uh, for electroplating, uh, it gives uh, pretty decent results, um, which is satisfying <laughs> and uh, and fun however some things to keep in mind cleanliness green oil and other contaminants hinder the copper to stick to the surface voltage too low voltage won't let uh, the electrolysis to happen particularly when bubbling happens as with the table salt only because more hydrogen is generated at the cathode best voltage I found is 5 volt and finally, current. It seems obvious, but make sure your power supply is able to provide enough current. Well, I hope you find interest in this video. If so, thumbs up and share with your friends. Uh, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.